Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org consequence and the consequence podcast network. Thanks as always for making your way here, checking out the series. You know what to do. You like what you see, hit that subscribe button and put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. You've heard me say this many times before. One of my all time favorite artists. I am so fortunate to get to talk to again, Mr. Stone Gossard. Hello. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for having me on. It's great to see you again. Uh, and <laughs> this time we get to, amongst the several things, we get to talk about a new Painted Shield album already. Uh, number two is here. You guys didn't waste any time going into this one, huh? You know, we ended up kind of, you know, as we kind of got into our our, our flow for the first record, we ended up really kind of stumbling onto uh, a whole uh, another avenue of songwriting, which was... Um, you know, Matt Chamberlain became a, a real force uh, uh, in songwriting and developed a bunch of the ideas on this on this new record and um, and Brittany Davis, too. So um, everyone's writing. And, you know, honestly, we have a, another batch that's uh, probably close to Painted Shield 3. So um, and this was, you know, it, it's it, it comes in fits and starts. So, you know, one week, all of a sudden, everyone will be like, oh, I threw some more things in the Dropbox and. And Mason has just been um, voracious and uh, he, he's been, you know, we've all been home a lot. So he's he's got his little studio set up. So he's been throwing stuff on and, and Brittany's got her studio set up and Matt's got a full, you know, drum studio down in Los Angeles. So everyone is um, everyone is just kind of excited about the combination of personalities in this band and 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 really like crazily true collaboration because we're, we're continuing to kind of jump around everyone's writing everyone's getting a chance to uh develop uh whole ideas so it's it's really fun it's really fun to watch too i mean you know take you for instance being in a band for 30 years it's not per se that a new album isn't exciting i'm, I'm sure it is to a, a certain degree but but this really seems like you know the bunch of kids who got together and then now they've created a band and, and now they get to do all this music again. Like uh, that's, that's gotta be something, I don't know. It's just gotta, obviously you've gotta be something fun to get, you know, further into your career and still be able to find that feeling. I'm still, I'm trying to keep that the theme of my life and I, and I, I've managed to do it so far and I'm, you know, I'm always worried that it's about to all end, but um, you know, it, the same holds true for Pearl Jam. I mean, I think when you've been in a, a band, the, 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 you know, the bar gets set higher and higher, um, you know, because you have had these collaborations. So then it's like new. Can you do it again in a new way? Can you, you know, recreate it where Painted Shield is just kind of getting to know each other. So there's a lot of you have a lot of range still. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Pearl Jam still I mean, the, we still have the fire. We still I still want to make the definitive, you know, you know, post 20 21st century Pearl Jam record. So um I'm I'm still dreaming about what's next for that. Yeah. Well, we'll get we'll get to that little band here in just a little bit too as well because we big announcement was made uh, today. But but on this painted shield, one of the first things I noticed was the Sonic Adventures, uh, especially on those first two tracks. You know, seem like you guys are already pushing far beyond where you left us off on on the first record. Um where like maybe that's what you're talking about with like Matt Chamberlain and all that stuff exactly. but where are you coming from with these riffs and everything these sounds where 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 did these just come from that that's that's literally from Matt Chamberlain um he's he's developing um ideas like a synth a synth bass part and and some drums over it and he'll just send us this track and and here's the thing about Matty's you know He's such a sought after session guy, such an incredibly great feel. I mean, he he can, you know, come in and learn, you know, whole set lists of material and, you know, in, a, in the hour it takes to fly to wherever you are. So he's he's one of those consummate professionals, but but really he writes like a songwriter. And and when he plays, when he when he gets a uh, a little synth part and he and he puts drums on it, he creates these very song-like patterns where it has this tension and release it has these sort of sections it, it 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 builds it has an arc to it and uh he's an incredible songwriter and i think that we're so lucky that we're able to uh kind of get in on the ground floor of matt's you know sort of explosion into into being a writer or or, or really i mean he has been writing for a while but really to to um reap the benefits of all the work that he's put in um so 
um, we're going to keep following that, but a lot of that atmospheric stuff and the way the drums sound and kind of all of that sort of space, that's, that's really him kind of developing it. And then, um, he's sort of Mason kind of overlaying this sort of storytelling aspect of it and the, and the melodies over the top. And then, you know, really giving tons of room to Brittany and myself. I mean, I think Brittany harmonizes with Mason almost on everything. So it's really their voices together now that's kind of becoming this kind of thing. And I, I keep going back to the idea of like really wanting to nurture that as well. And almost in like the sense of when you think about X and you always think about John Doe and Xene's voices, it's it's one sound. It mm. kind of ends up being this like such a unique uh, characteristic. And I, I think Painted Shield has a, a chance to kind of have that that dual sort of harmonic um, kind of thing that that is so it just adds to its uniqueness and it's you know and I think anytime that Brit is adding in their voice it's just so soulful and so um, it, it the, the the harmonic choices they make are just so interesting so yeah. it's really it's really cool yeah and, and having Brittany take the lead now uh, life and rewind. Um, being one of the big standouts here, yeah. it like I wonder like how much does that change the idea of what Painted Shield gets to be now? Because in, when you think of that traditional sense, the way we were introduced to Painted Shield, of course, was just Mason, you know, yeah. as the as the front yeah. person there. But now, I guess it does get to become. Or do you see both of them as the 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 lead vocalist? Holy. Do you start taking a, a turn as a lead in the future? Like, how does this work? You know, it's it. They are both real singers, and you know, I think that they come from different places, and they ha both have really strong um, uh, elements that they're bringing to it. But I think we're in that phase right now. It's this. It's this sort of adage of uh, how many balls can you keep in the air at the same time without you know dropping them. And I, I think that we're really. Um, I, I'm trying. We're. I think as a band, we're really trying to again be open to re newing at any point like well kind of what what do we have and like what's great instead of you know bands fall into patterns and they want to like okay well then this is my role and this is and i think that that can be really good but it but it also there's there's opportunities i think when you are um uh when you keep uh opening the door to new possibilities brit is a formidable singer and songwriter and we'd be fools not to uh, incorporate their whole uh, thing as much as as much as they want to share with us um, into our soup, because it's only going to make our soup more interesting and more you know cool. And I think if we have a superpower, it's it's our openness to sharing, because I think that's maybe one of the most difficult things to do as artists and as as band members is is creating an identity and uh and and songs where you have to make choices about all those things that go into a song um and remain open to really wanting input from kind of all around and i think it's you know it's difficult and it can be messy and it can be sometimes unsuccessful but i think when it is successful you start to get into that you know, some of that, some of your favorite bands you've ever, you know, sort of, um, you know, you think about bands like, you know, the Beatles and you think the reason why the Beatles are so great is Paul McCartney's fucking genius. He's incredible. Of course, John Lennon, oh my God, everybody in that band is amazing. Mm -hmm. But it really is when you watch that movie and you see him sharing and, and interacting with each other, there's, there's not a, you know, uh, that's not a that's not a you know that, that's a difficult thing to achieve and it's a difficult thing to maintain you know it's it's very easy to kind of everyone go home and write a bunch of songs by themselves and go here's my song and here's how it goes you know and and it's th that is cool too and there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of good things that can come out of really strong individual efforts but I think that's the excitement about Painted Shield I think that is probably one of the biggest things that is is sort of driving it is that we don't know where it's going and it's so interesting to have something where it's just pure like uh, we you know it could be anything at any yeah. time. and you and you get so many 
different sounds. I mean, I talked about those first two tracks and then you get to Life and Rewind and that's a very different sound. And, and those kind of, it, it's funny that, you know, this all comes within the last couple of years of you relaunching Loose Groove because it reminds me of what you all were doing when you first started that. I grabbed, um, gra I guess I grabbed both versions of it, but, uh, you know, the this little soundtrack meant the world to me in the Chicago yeah. cab soundtrack. Yeah. I, I have two versions of it. It wow, meant so cool. much to me, that's but awesome. it it's because of that, you know, like being introduced to so many different sounds, what you all were doing back then. I feel like I'm starting to hear that in album form now from yeah. what you're doing with painted shield. I, I mean, loose groove is really an extension of, you know, my relationship with Regan and now with Billy Jean working with us, it, it really is this sort of, we're, we're gathering uh, threads that we lost a while ago and we're just we're still pulling on them and we're still um still excited about the same kinds of things we're still excited about the same themes um but i think um even more sort of cherishing the moment and and really being like um uh just uh just feeling very fortunate to kind of have these moments so everything is uh we have a lot of energy for it because it's it's so precious you know yeah. that you don't you don't get to go back to your childhood, you know, sometimes there's a lot of people that, that don't allow themselves that. And, um, and it's, it's, it's a real, it's a blessing for sure. Yeah. We'll get into some of these songs too. And, and actually I'll, I'll jump around a little bit with two projects of yours, Painted Shield and Brad, which I got a couple of the, uh, the CDs over my shoulder here. The first time I heard Dead Man's Dream, that was one of the first times within Painted Shield that I sort of recalled Brad, I think what yeah. Britney's doing in the background sounded oh, yeah. like Sean Smith to me yeah, yeah. In, in getting that. And and then looking back, uh, Interiors, which is one of my all-time favorite. I, I love that record as much as I love any Pearl Jam record. I think it's wow, incredible. Awesome. And hearing what you were doing musically back then, which seemed to like you were leaning into a little bit more of a pop rock thing than maybe you had done in Pearl Jam in recent years at that time. You know, and that, that kind of led into some other things, but I'm hearing that from you too. I don't know if you can put a, a pin on it, I put a marker on it, but but do you hear the relationship between the two bands and what you're doing musically on the guitar on, on this round? Well, I mean, I think Dead Man's Dream is it's obviously it's kind of a little bit more boogie woogie than Pearl Jam kind of generally goes for, you know, in general. Like that's something that comes pretty natural to me. And it's like, it's not, it's not the, it's not the creme de la creme for for ed in terms of like what he's attracted to or sort of where he connects um usually he connects to these weird you know things that i throw together that are like you know, almost like mismatches but um you think about evolution or something like that it's like this it's got to have some uh, angularity to it and some like um it's got to be a little noisier and mm -hmm. uh, not so sexy <laughs> <laughs> but uh so it makes sense that, that that dead man's dream that's that's a riff i would have played for brad for sure and i in fact you know i i, I did play that 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 was a brad riff at one point we never finished but um it was it was thrown into the the pile so um it, so it, it makes, makes sense. sense there we yeah. go yeah yeah Boy. that that record i mentioned is 25th and and i got welcome to discovery park over here which is also the 20th of that one this year and I hadn't read up on anything and I was like, man, I just wonder if there's more Brad and it turns out there's more Brad. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a, there's a record and it's uh, very close to being done and it's, it's beautiful and we're very excited about it. We're just kind of trying to figure out the best way to do it and how to, and how to fin how to really finish it out. And um, it's, it's not quite ready yet. And the, and we haven't figured out exactly how it's going to come out, but we're, we're really working on it and we really, really, um, expect that it's going to be a special record. And we, we, we've spent some time kind of, of, of going back and listening to all these old takes that we had and old songs that, um, that we recorded and, um, and some beautiful, beautiful Sean Smith vocals and poetry and, uh, performances. And, um, it's, it's, it's going to come, I don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come soon. -ish, I hope. Well, that's what, that's what I was kind of wondering, you know, finding the, uh, the Sean Smith vocals to put on this, was this stuff from his personal stash or was it stuff that you all had already sort of done together at demo? It was all stuff that we'd recorded together, um, as band, as a band. So it's not, there's no, uh, uh, individual vocals that weren't connected to a song. It was all sort of demos, but then it was kind of going back and being able to kind of go, okay, you know, 
here's the shape that Sean has. Let's make this little edit here and let's let's expand harmonically on this, you know, the bridge and maybe we'll put some piano on it and kind of bring out that melody more and uh, turn the guitar off in the front. And actually, let's have the drums come in the second verse and, you know, like just mm -hmm. making some arrangement choices that really will bring out the song more because none of them were they were all just kind of demos and and i mean that which is very brad because we ended up putting out demos constantly that was our we you know once we recorded something it was very difficult for us to kind of do too much more to it you know because it would always be well let's go back and i like the first rough mix where it just sounded kind of you know and that was kind of our thing so we're trying to stay in that same mode. It's none of it's going to be polished. You know, it's going to yeah. sound like Brad. Well, it's such a special band. Uh, and, and of course, Sean's voice. Uh, I don't have to be the millionth person to say it, but was such an amazing voice on top of that. So I'm quite excited yeah. about hearing, hearing what's, the, what's there on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then, so we get back to this one, uh, back into Painted Shield. And I'm, I'm digging into these songs. One of the tracks, Beyond Dead Man's Dream, had made it out last year, I think called Fourth of July. If I remember that one was kind of released a, a yep. little bit early and suddenly here we are. And that there's, here's a track that's found yeah. a different level. Yeah. Is that hitting you all in the same way? Because with what's happening over on the other side of the world, I'm listening to 4th of July going, Oh, wow. You know, uh, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't really listened to 4th of July in a while, but it, it, in regard, I mean, I'm just, I, I just don't, I, the, the level of anxiety and the level of, of sort of, uh, upheaval and um, insanity that you know the world is kind of going through right now is just it just feels like relentless and I'm just so I'm so I'm honestly very worried and very sad about so much of this stuff so yeah I mean fuck man it's yeah it's a powerful how do you, how song. Do you have a conversation about music and about bombs falling on your you know right your team. it's like it, there's a complete disconnect you know between what's going on over there and and the rest of the world reading about it in the paper so i mean i don't i don't know what to say other than i just we you know i don't know where how do how do we stop that i i'm not sure you know mm -hmm. not the first time you all been in this position uh just with the songs that you've been connected to but it is it, it is one of the absolute powerful moments on a record that's got several very powerful moments mm. and, and i'll say i'll flip that too in very fun moments uh, i don't want to make it too heavy in in that regard because like um um oh i dropped the title it's the in-flight song uh, with the plane in the sky oh yeah falling falling uh falling out the sky oh uh, talk about total fun yeah. and, and here you here we are again talking about Brittany and mason's voice together i mean i yeah. think this is the one where they really do like sparring partners and yeah, it just yeah. hits so back well and forth. yeah yeah yeah. So, I mean, when you talk about getting into album three, are we going to be hearing more of that type of stuff? Do you think, um, you know, I think that there will be some of that. Um, and, and then more, I think also of sort of the bird's nest kind of uh, motif where it's really uh, both their voices just sort of really locked in harmony the whole time where again, it's, it's sort of, it becomes sort of one voice. Um, so we're going to touch it all. The, the next record is, is more out there. It's more sort of uh, adventurous. It's, it's probably less, uh, even less um, sort of songwritery in a way and more um, uh, just taking these interesting pieces and sort of forming them into songs. So um, it'll be, it'll be fun to, have that i think that hopefully that will be done by the end of the year so if, if all goes well and you guys get, you do get the tour of this at some point right uh yeah we're i think painted shield's gonna play at ohana if all works out so uh that that'll be our I, maybe our debut show um we'll see yeah uh, that's interesting there's a connection here too and that, maybe you all have made this connection maybe i'm reaching too far but the similarities when i talked about those first two tracks like live broadcast and what ed put out with earthling and yeah. I thought there's something just in the ether, you know, did, did yeah. you all make that connection? Um, well, as far as what, what's the connection? I mean, what, what, what's the, what, what do you see as the similarities? I'm, I'm just... seeing, you know, the live broadcast, the way Ed opens up his album too, with this whole sort of a broadcast type of yeah. thing, but there's yeah. the earthling and there's the alien part of this album. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's, sure. there's that whole thing, just nice coincidence, yeah. maybe. 
a complete coincidence. And but that's the way art works sometimes is, you know, things are in the air and everybody is 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 begins to kind of pick up on it. So um, that, you know, that makes sense to me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would see that. You got to you got to wonder what the, the the psychological part of that's, you know, the uh, yeah, because there, there was a part not that long ago. And I end up talking about, it, I think, in, in more than a few interviews of artists that had started writing about space. And this was 2016, 2017, 2018. And I thought, of course, we're escaping. We just want to get the hell out of this place. Well, well yeah. But what about 1971 Rocket Man and uh, Ground Control of Major Tom and that whole that was a real that was that was the first time space became like in popular music like mm -hmm. you know David for all the Bowie kids and, who wanted to grow up being john, maybe elton john was first i can't I, I can't remember which one came out first uh but they were pretty close together yeah uh, elton i think came first because that's why they rushed bowie's outs as a single to kind of or yeah i might be wrong about that but i mean uh, i wonder when starman was i mean so there's some references in the spiders from mars so but, you know, Bowie's Bowie was early on that. And I don't remember Frank Sinatra ever singing about <laughs> going in outer space. <laughs> Did he have any cowboy songs? Because that would have been the jump. You had the cowboy generation, then you had the right. space generation, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, uh, which generation were you? Were, were, what's uh <sighs> Well, I, I, I saw Star Wars when it first came out. So I, I witnessed that freak out, you know, that explosion. And uh <laughs> Um, you know, going to everyone going to see it five times and lines around the block and that whole thing that's long right. gone. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't remember. I wasn't really too much of a cowboy. I haven't yeah, that, I feel cowboy. like that would have been a little bit earlier than you. That's, yeah. uh, that there. I'm, I'm reaching around here because uh, I know we're getting short on time. And I did mention the other big thing, the announcement as we're talking about touring was that uh, the tour dates from Pearl Jam have finally yes. been announced. This record right here finally, finally gets to be yeah. toured. Yeah, I know it's exciting. Two and which means I've got to go back and figure out how to play all those songs again for the third time, you know, because we learned them all and we're kind of ready to go in 2019 or, you know, and then stopped and then, and then we played some shows, just a few, and then I learned them, we learned them all again. And then, you know, that when you're old, it all goes out the window. So next, uh, starting next week, I'm, I'm, starting to figure out how to play Pearl Jam songs again, which I'm so excited. I mean, I'm just, it's been so long. I just, you know, I love, yeah. I love touring with Pearl Jam and for us to be actually on the road again and playing some consistent shows and kind of just kind of getting back into it. It's like, I didn't know that, you know, I mean, I hope it all still happens. I didn't know that who knows what's going to happen. You know, it, it's, it's a, we're going to take it one day at a time, but I'm, I'm so excited that we are moving ahead. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I saw my first shows, which two of them were stadium shows. I saw tool and Billy Eilish this past week. Oh, wow. Back to back sold out shows. And to be in that room that, you know, is a KFC yum center here in, in Louisville, but to be in that room and just have 20,000 people, you know, it's, that's yeah. a feeling that you, you don't think you've forgotten yeah. until you feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. What great shows. That's cool. Yeah, nice, uh, different, different crowds, yeah, but, uh, course, but nice back to back but, stuff right there. But, yeah. you know, also what a rela uh, interesting relationship to an album that must have given you so far to have, you know, had Gigaton out there now for a couple of years. And, you know, for for a band like you all, these songs come to life on the stage. That's where yeah, they start totally. changing, you know, yeah, so, yeah. you know, what what is that like? I mean, it's going to be great. I'm so proud of that record. I, I just really loved that process of making that record and how it ended up becoming what it what it was i think it's one of our special records and i'm not worried about it you know in terms of like people ask you know are you sad that you didn't get you know it didn't get the shot or whatever it's like it with pearl jam it doesn't matter all those songs are in the catalog we're gonna play them and and if 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 people really love a song they're gonna we're gonna know and we're gonna play it for you and you know um so I, I'm just the fact that we've got so many songs and so many Ed has so many stories and so many lyrics that people just connect with and that, you know, I get to be in a band that, you know, kind of helps to animate that, you know, like we get to, you know, hit riffs and play parts and 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 sort of drive the energy of that, you know, of a room and and create something that we've all worked together for so long to make. It's just it's incredible. It's like such a, 
it's a miracle, you know. Yeah. I'll say the one thing that I miss that uh, with Gigaton, I think maybe even with Lightning Bolt is, and this is a, the culture across the board, um, is the lack of B-sides these days. I know there's yeah. not the same reason to put those out. Are there B-sides still? Like, yeah. I'm thinking like it's now been like 20 years since you guys put out Lost Dogs. Could there be a, another Lost Dogs in the works at some point? It's it, there, <laughs> there. There is some B-sides for sure. Um, I think that that sort of we it's important for us to maintain that um, irreverence to, you know, songwriting in terms of like just throwing rough vocals on just taking stabs at stuff, trying stuff. That's where you kind of can get some more B sides, too. Um, I think we've been a little bit more methodic and uh, methodical in terms of trying to start and finish things. So uh there is songs out there that we haven't finished and and there is some things uh whether they're b-sides or not you know who knows but you know that's funny it's like the b-side record ends up being some of the you know people's favorite records because you didn't screw with it too much you just mm -hmm. let it kind of be and and that's one lesson that we've learned from our fans and from being in this band is that it's not about what you think it is. Probably it's probably something else that makes people like really like be in love with, with what's going on. And, you know, um, it's, it's the, it's the alchemy of the whole thing and us being together and trusting each other and, and kind of believing in a, in that same process of rock and roll, which is simple and it doesn't require any scientific knowledge or any special skill set other than just like, a belief and and some a little bit of talent and some love for each other and that that kind of generates so i i we're just i, I want to just keep staying in that state of mind where we make looser records and more and are and are quicker in terms of being able to kind of generate um that kind of feeling or that yeah. kind of art well when you look back at it too i mean especially considering your all's track record with b-sides you led better last kiss becoming actually staple yeah. hits for you all uh strangest tribe is one of my all-time favorites oh, and yeah, Fatal nice. and other side and, yeah. and that type of stuff like you know i as a fan of course we live for that stuff you know yeah. that's you know getting that stuff is is big I, I will end with one of the obvious questions here the way you talk about working with painted shield the way you all have is that a process that pearl jim could do because now it does you've talked about this many times before you've slowed down on the albums which oh. is totally understandable but could you all work like that we all we we all i mean we do already in a sense i mean i think that we have more opportunities to be in the studio together painted shield spread out and you know everyone in painted shield lives in different parts of the country and it's it requires money to get everybody together and like, you know, so we don't want to spend a bunch of money that puts pressure on the record to have to make a bunch of money. So, um, but, you know, Pearl Jam is, we constantly are asking, uh, what is another process? How is it that we can, you know, do something new? What's the, what's the next, you know, step? I know just speaking with Jeff the other day, it was just like, we're just like, uh, we're talking about trying different sort of formations of how to how to generate song ideas and and particularly ones that are like you know um that move us um that move us in a in a new in a in a in a cool direction or in a direction that you know that makes people go ah you know like how, how do you do that so um we're always pushing that still to this day yeah. Well, that's what I, I mean. I know you've got to tour this record and everything, but with it two years old, that's what I start wondering. Like, does it become to the point where you're like, OK, well, we've got to start talking about the next record at this oh, point. Yeah. Could we do oh, it yeah, like no. that? Yeah. Yeah. And we've recorded some songs. We're, we're, we're on our way. You know, we're making music. Look at you. Yeah. More Pearl Jam, a third album from Painted Shield. And, yeah. you know, that's everything. And, and Brad and everything else. Uh, Stone, you know, I love what you do. I'm such a huge fan. I hope you continue doing it for a million years. Kyle, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, I could only wish everyone, every DJ was like you. That'd be, we'd really be, Blue Screw would be on the map right now. It'd be amazing. We're going to make you Thank famous, you buddy. We're going to make you famous. Yeah, uh, I love I'll it. Be, I'll I be seeing it. you guys Thank at the you. Nashville show later this year as well. I saw that on the, uh, the dates okay, that's great. right down the road. So can't wait. Okay. Make sure you get a hold of me. I'll come out and find you. Absolutely, buddy. Thank Thanks, you so Kyle. much. We'll see you around. All right. Thank you.